Next, let's zoom back out so we can see the whole animation again. I'm just going to set the zoom setting back to 100%. And we'll move things around a little bit just so we can see our stage a little better in the hole. And also adjust things a little bit so that we can see our layers up here at the top. Now if we just move the timeline a little bit, we can see what we have to do next. You can see that my golf ball is still following along the path that we set up for it before, but we're leaving the holes and the dimples and everything else, the highlight, behind. So we need to add the same animation to those layers as well. Now it just so turns out that we have a really easy way to do this. I can take the animation that we created on our golf ball and simply copy and paste it over to the other objects. Now let's go ahead and give that a try. First of all, I'll click on the golf ball. When you have the golf ball layer selected, you can go up to the Edit menu, and down here under Timeline, we have a special set of copies. You'll notice that we can cut, copy, and paste frames, and we can also copy and paste motion. That's what we're going to do right here. I'm going to select Copy Motion. Now, I can go over to the layer holding the dimples, the mask, and even the highlight, and paste it right onto them. Let's do the dimple layer first. Now the first thing that I want to do is go back here to frame 1, and we've got most of the other layers locked except for the highlight here, so let me lock that one just for the moment. And I'll unlock the dimple layer. Now as I go down and select the contents of the dimple layer, you can see that we have a group. That's not a symbol yet. So normally what we would do is make that a symbol. Now it isn't a layer by itself, so it's half ready to go. But what's also kind of nice is if we just go over to our edit menu, go back to the timeline, and choose Paste Motion, the program has actually realized that it's not a symbol, and we have an option to have the Flash program make it a symbol for us. If you just click OK, it's going to turn it into a movie clip symbol. Now, it doesn't give it a very good name, Symbol 1, but the program can take care of some of these things for us. If I just lock the layer again, that'll re-enable the masking so that we can see the cropped area removed. Now you notice that the paste operation added the same keyframes in that we had in our golf ball animation. And it reduced the number of frames to match. Now if we drag our playhead a little bit, you can see that the dimples do try to follow the ball, but we drop off because the mask isn't following the ball. So we need to set the same animation up on the mask layer as well. In fact, we need it on the mask and the final highlight layer. Now we could just copy and paste just like we did for the dimples, but let me show you something else. In our last chapter, we took a look at a new panel called the Motion Presets panel. And as you remember, the top part is filled with default presets that we can just select and apply to our objects. But you'll notice underneath that folder, we've got a custom preset section. Now here's how to make a custom motion preset. It's basically copy and paste. All we have to do is go back up to our golf ball layer. Let's select that layer, and you can see the path is selected down here as well. I can go to this button right down here at the bottom and save my current selection as a preset. I'll give it a name, golf ball drop. I'll click OK. And now we have the new golf ball drop preset added to our custom presets for the whole movie. To use our new preset, all I need to do is go up to our mask layer, and first I'm going to unlock it because we have to select our mask on the stage in order for it to run. There, I've got my mask shape selected. And then I'm just going to go down and make sure my golf ball drop preset is selected and click apply. You can see once again that all the keyframes have been applied, and the motion tween has been synchronized with the other two motions. So it's just like a copy and paste. Now, if I relock that layer, you can see that not only the dimples following the ball, but so is the mask layer. So while we're at it, let's set it up on the highlight too. I'm just going to unlock that highlight layer, click on our highlight shape over here on the stage, and apply our golf ball preset to it. Now since we might need this preset panel, I'm just going to go and put it over with my other panels in the dock here. That way I can just pop it up when we need it. And just to make sure it stays there, I'm going to go up to my workspace settings and I'll just choose new workspace again. We'll type the same name in, main, and it'll warn me that I'm overriding the old one, but that's okay, we're just updating it. Now you probably noticed that when we pasted the animation onto the highlight, it looks like the alpha setting that we had has gone away, and it's just obliterating all the objects on the ball. 
hiding that layer and we can see that the dots are still underneath there. Well that's because our preset didn't have any alpha settings and when you apply a preset or paste a motion you're actually replacing whatever settings that that object has with the new ones. So our alpha has been changed but that's pretty easy to fix. We can just move our playhead back to frame 1. Now remember none of these keyframes that are showing here have any alpha settings. So if we change the first keyframe it's going to stay that way unless we add some other changes. So here at frame 1 I'll just make sure I'm clicking on the highlight. That'll bring up our style menu and you can see the alpha has been removed but we can just put it back. In fact the program has remembered our last setting which was for the golf ball itself. So there we've got it all set up. And now when we preview our animation you can see that all the elements are moving in unison as the golf ball approaches the hole and drops in.